Hey folks, Ray from LoveYourRV.com and today I'm back with my review of the Lensun solar generator, a little power box that uh, I received a few weeks ago. I did a, an unboxing video and went through all its features and I've been using it for the last few weeks uh, demoing all the different things it does and I'm back with my uh, my likes and my dislikes and what I feel about it and also I'm going to go through and kind of give it a bit of a torture test and and see what it can see what it can do as far as output um, AC and DC and, and and how it charges up how long it takes to charge up so it charges two ways you can charge it using a solar panel a 100 watt solar panel which I've done and also you can just plug it into a a, a shore power AC outlet and charge it that way so let's get to it so I did a test charge with my 100 watt panel here and just on the back what I did the box came with this cord with two of these MC4 connectors so I wired them into my existing just unplugged them and plugged these in and I found probably at uh, we're right now we're kind of in mid to late March so uh, the sun the sun's not out for as long as in the summertime, but I get to probably a good 10 hours of sun a day. Um, the first day the box charged up to around 70%, so I had to come back the, the next day and finish it up. So it does take an awfully long, a long time to uh, charge the box. And it's limited to, as far as I read in the manual, it's limited to only the 100 watt input. So you're only charging it at a maximum. I think it's at 5 amps at a time. So does take a long time but it does charge with a solar panel. One task that may be useful with a, a power box like this is uh, adding fresh water to the RV using a use an old uh, 12 volt pump here and then I uh, pump it into the rig so I thought I'd do a test here see if it's uh, capable of powering the pump with one of its 12 volt power outputs. It's got the pump here I just put in my uh, amp meter here so I can see how many amps it's it's putting out to, to drive the pump. So let's turn that on. There we go, pumps on. And looks like we're drawing about three amps, a little over three amps there. So this is a 12 volt five amps so it's got enough to, to drive this little pump here. And just let that uh, drain there. Let's see uh, 94% there. I'm just going to pump this uh, six and a half gallon jug in there and we'll see how much uh, percentage it uses. Okay, all empty. Let's turn that off and unplug this. That's it. So, yeah, didn't even really show much drop at all. So, this box could do that quite a few times. Probably put a nice uh, big uh, 30 or 60 gallon bladder in there too. Okay, yeah, let's try another six gallons. See if we can get that percentage to drop any. So once again, drawing 3.3 amps at 12 volts. Okay, so that's 12 gallons pumped. And I'm still showing 95, 96 here, so it's hardly even registering down. It's taken much out of it. So it draws around 3 amps, 12 volts, so maybe, you know, 36 watts. This thing's got over 500 watt hours, so you can imagine this thing could pump steady probably for about 15 hours before it would run out of juice. So pretty good little handy device for portable applications like that. My next test is going to be to test the 12 volt, 5 amp output ports here. So to do that, I got a couple air compressors and you just plug into the 12 volt port here. Now I didn't, one th drawback is I didn't get any accessory plugs. I would have liked a, uh, I got kind of a lighter socket plug here, kind of fashioned my own line so that I could plug in something, you know, using a lighter socket. So we got our, uh, I got a compressor here that runs through this lighter socket. So we'll just, uh, fire it up and see if it works. Yep, 
no problem. And I got even a bigger compressor, my Viair compressor, so we'll fire that up. I'll see if it'll, both of them can work at the same time. So you can power the ports simultaneously, all, all uh, three of them, I guess. Um, I think you can power all the ports on this, so you could have the, both your AC ports and, and the four USB and the three, so that's one good feature of this. So now let's just do some current tests, see uh, if it is putting out five amps max. Okay, so I hooked up my clamp-on amp meter here. Let's just fire up the Viair. So you can see it's actually putting out 6.6 .6 amps, so it's actually more than what it's showing on the rating there. Just block some air and see if we can up that. There we go, we're actually going up 13, 13 amps. So that's pretty good, it actually puts out higher than what, it's rate, what it says it's rated on the front. But that could be because it can run them all at the same time, so they must be kind of parallel together in there. So it should be able to run 15 amps, you know, 3 times 5 amps. So that's pretty good that it can run the, these sort of items. It would be handy for running air compressors, compressors and all sorts of things. So I'm happy with the output there. I'm not very happy that they didn't give you any kind of accessory plugs to use those ports. Next I've set up a little test bed for myself and we're going to test the AC output capabilities of the, the Lensun solar generator. So I'm charged up about 95% right now as the dial reads and we're going to use the inverter function. So it has a 500 watt inverter um, inside so I should be able to power, I've got this set up to power my heater, um, I should be able to power it on low, but first um, I want to see what the overload looks like, so I'm going to put it up to the second level, which would be 900 watts, so it should overload this thing. Okay. I also have a, an amp meter set up here. Right now this is on the low power setting of the heater, so you see it's uh, showing a 4.4 4.41 amps of AC, so we're way up there close to its maximum wattage. So let's just turn it up to 900. Okay, so went into overload there. Started screaming at me. Okay, so we'll just reset that. There we go. Okay, you can see it's come down. 93 it's kind of bouncing back in its percentage. I guess it's calculating it using a microprocessor The next what I want to do is run it on the low setting that it can handle So at 4.4 .4 amps at 12 volts. We're pretty close to the 500 watt mark um, So we'll see how long that lasts. I have a little, uh, a little Smartphone here. I'll put it on to stopwatch mode and we'll just see how long before it uh, tells me it's ran out of juice. There we go. Percentage seems to be dropping pretty quick on the on the readout there, We're already down into the 60s and hasn't even ran very long. But I'll let it go. I know when it gets down to Somewhere around 2% it starts giving me an alarm, so that way I'll, I'll know when it's finished. Okay, we've hit the five minute mark, and just a few seconds ago some fans turned on inside the, the Lensun box here, got quite loud, and we're already down to 36%, and it's only been doing that for five minutes. Um, we're still at 4.3 amps. Um, we're doing 110 volts AC, so if you do the math, current times voltage each equals watts, we're drawing about 400 and around 480 watts out of something that's capable of producing 500 watts. So we're really maxing the thing out. Already it's showing 
and we're not even at six minutes yet so I don't think this box is going to, you would think it should be able to power it for, you know, for, it was coming from 95%, you would think it would get at least around 50 minutes. There you heard the fan turn off, so the cooling fan kind of auto cycles, I guess, as it, as it needs to. So I'll continue on and come back when the, when the box shuts off from uh, exhausting all its power give you a little update. We're at about 14% on the readout there. Um, we're at 17, almost 18 minutes and now the the fan in this is uh, hasn't been cycling so much. It's been pretty full on. Also starting to get a little warm at the back there so it's it's sucking a lot of air through there. The box is a little bit hot on the one side and this side it's starting to warm up a bit as well. So we've hit 5%. When it hits 5%, the little battery indicator started to flash. Went back up to 6%. And we're at 32 minutes, 23, 23 seconds. So it seems to go down a lot slower. Like the first 60% went down quite quickly, but the, the last part's been going down a lot slower. So I don't think the, the um, readout is entirely accurate. There we are now. We're I don't know if you can see if the camera can pick it up or not, but it's there's a little battery symbol in there that's flashing now. I guess that's to give you a little warning. Oh, it's it's uh, screaming at me now, and we're down to two percent, and it looks like we're at 42 minutes. It's really loud. I guess we'll call it quits because you wouldn't be able to be with hang out with that noise there we go stopper there so 42 minutes and 26 seconds that's not too bad and it ran right at about 4.2 4.4 amps the whole time so the voltage coming out of this um, box on the AC is 110 so if you do the math it's around 480 watts for 42 minutes and 26 seconds. So, um, the, and I started at 95%, I didn't start at 100% battery. So it did pretty well what it's advertising to do. Um, it didn't do, they, I know they quote the 5, 10 watt hours, but that's the actual battery capacity because it has a 46 amp hour battery and the battery voltage is 11.1 .1 volts. And that comes out to right, right around 510. Also, the power's being eaten up by uh, the fans in there. They came on and ran quite a bit. And also, it, it loses a lot in heat, um, just the elect electronics in it. You can see we got some spots in there, 135, 134, especially on this side here. I guess all the heat sinks are on this side. And it it's almost gets to the point you can't hold your hand on it. I can hold my hand on it, but it's right up there, you know right around uh, 130 30, uh, Fahrenheit. So it does get quite warm on the side while it's doing that. So that was a pretty good torture test for the box running it at max output for the inverter or pretty close to max output and it ran for you know 42 minutes pretty well full out with the fans and everything going it and didn't die or anything so now I've just plugged it in to recharge it um, I noticed the the indicator bounced back up to 19 percent so that thing it seems to be not super accurate or anything now I'm going to leave it plugged in um, usually I've done I've done, I recharged this box quite a bit now and plugging it into uh, AC power it takes roughly 8 to 10 hours pretty close to 10 hours in fact to recharge that battery in there. Um, I think it only charges at about 5 amps. So you can see if, if you used it to power something heavy and it was totally depleted in under an hour, you have to go and wait another 10 hours to get it fully charged back up again. So that's one of its, uh, one of its cons for me is the low recharge, the slow recharge time. But we'll, uh, we'll let that charge up and, and maybe do another test.
Next I'm going to check out the jumper cable port here. So right up here we got a flap that opens and exposes some connections where I can connect their, uh, the provided set of jumper cables to jump or start a car. Let's see here called smart booster cable. It says as a voltage rating 12 and a current 250 amp start to 500 peak. Now I don't want to mess around with my truck or anything so I think I'm going to test it out on this generator here. This generator has a, an auto uh, wireless start or push button start. It uses this lead acid battery so just disconnected the battery. I'm going to try to start the generator with the box using the, the jumper cables here. Okay, flip it on. Oops. all about it saying error 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 huh. maybe that's normal for it or something give it another try Uh, beeping's all about. Anyway, it seems to work, seems to have output, and is able to easily jump this generator. This little thing's a little cheesy, a little lightweight plasticky thing here. I don't find these cables overly thick, but uh, I guess it's a nice feature to have in a box. I thought I'd finish up the video by taking the the, the solar generator part just so folks can see exactly what's in there. People often wonder why the heck am I paying so much for one of these boxes anyway. Um, also you'd probably never want to take apart your own because first off you'd void the warranty and second it may be easy to uh, ruin it. Anyway you can see the big blue block here that's your lithium battery. So they say that's 48 amp hours at 11.1 .1 volts. And judging I won't take the wrappers off, it's all sealed here with plastic. But it looks like it's a lot of small batteries all put together in there. Almost looks like they're the size of a like a AAA battery and they've just paralleled them all in there and series them to make a big battery pack out of it. And you see coming out the ends, this is the the charging and uh, discharging wires. They plug in over onto this circuit board. This goes to the, the jumper cable system. And it looks like they have a couple control wires to probably um, monitor the charge and discharge of the, the battery. Then you've got a big combo board. Looks like everything is on one board. You've got your solar charge converter in there, the MPPT solar controller and you've got your uh, true sine wave inverter in there um, and you can see at each end you've got your, your electronics on this end this is the one with the USB and the DC outputs and the display That's what those circuit boards are about and you've got your on off switches and fans looks like there's a multiple fans in here you got a fan here and you got another fan over here and even a third fan fourth fans there's a lot of a cooling that goes on i guess when you shove this much stuff into a small box you're going to need a lot of cooling um overall it looks pretty good the circuit board looks like a pretty good quality circuit board on there i don't see anything really cheesy or cheap about it um, I don't know much about the lithium battery packs, but uh, 
connections look pretty good. They're like little gold, gold type connections on the end. Everything looks pretty good that way. And then on this end, we've got the, the AC output, two AC plugs and the AC input, and then also the solar charge input there. So anyway, I just thought I'd take it apart just in case you're curious what's inside that box. Uh, looks pretty good. I'll be able to get it back together without breaking it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> 25 years of doing electronics repair. This was really my wheelhouse back in the day. So that's why I'm always curious of how, they, how they've built stuff. One more quick test while it's apart. I decided to plug it in and uh, find out what the charge amperage into the battery is. So I just got it across one of these small cables that comes in. And that looks to be the charging cable and we've got 4.79 amps going in there at 11.1 11, 11 .1 volts. So this battery, if it is a uh, 48 amp hour battery, it's going to take roughly 10 hours to go from right to dead flat to fully charged, which is kind of jives with what they quote. Okay, let's go through my likes and dislikes for the Lensun. 510G solar generator. Let's start with the likes and then we'll we'll get to the dislikes later on. First thing I like is the compact size. Not very big at all, especially considering the amount of power that's packed in there. So that's a really good feature. Also, it's lightweight. And coming in around 9.9 .9 pounds, so it's pretty easy to move around even for someone who who's not terribly strong. Um, kind of a stylish looking case. I'll give it that. They've made a, a nice package there. Um, also, this grab handle is really, really nice. Some of them can be a little, a little uh, tricky to, to lift and move around, but this one's really easy, real firm, firm handle on it. Um, next, we've got the 46 amp hour battery, which compared to a lot in the same price range is a, a little higher than a lot of them have. Also, it has the 500 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter and can handle a, a brief surge of 1,000 watts. So it's got good capacity and it's got a good uh, power output rating as far as running running something AC off it. It's nice to have the, the dual uh, uh, European and, and kind of American plugs on it, I guess, if you were to take it on international travel or something like that. Um, it can also, it's nice that it can be recharged off of a solar panel. So you just flip this thing and, and it's got a plug. So that's a, that's a good feature. Um, also the type of a solar controller, solar charge controller, is a MPPT type. So that's good versus the PWM. I guess you get a, a little a quicker charge off that. Um, lots of output ports. So you get your two AC and then you've got <clears throat> your four USB and three 12 volt. Uh, so that's nice. You, if you need to recharge a lot of small items, you know, camera batteries or phones, tablets, that sort of thing. It's, and they can all be used at once, which is nice. You can, you can use all nine ports at once. Um, another good feature is it can be used as a, a UPS, um, uninterruptible power supply. So say you're powering something on the AC here and you have it plugged in um, and the power goes out you'll have 48 amp hours of, of capacity so say you have your desktop computer plugged into here and then this is plugged into shore power say say the campground goes down this thing will, will continue instantly will continue powering your your desktop computer so that's a nice feature to have not all of them do that as far as I've I've read uh, what else we got uh, you can jump start a vehicle that's a nice extra feature on it uh, and it's rated for a wide temperature range so it's supposed to work down to minus 10 Celsius or up to 60 Celsius so that's a nice wide range so you can go down you know a few degrees below zero there and it'll still work but it'll also work when it's really hot out so some pretty good 
pretty good things there. Now let's get to my dislikes. The biggest dislike for me is how long it takes to charge. So once you've run it down, this thing takes pretty well 10 hours, I've found, to, to come back to a full charge, which is quite a long time if you ran it down the, the day before and you need to get it back, especially if you're traveling. Uh, also, there's no 12-volt charging plug, which I found kind of weird. You can charge it using the AC input here or with a solar panel, but you can't, um, say, plug it into your car's uh, 12-volt power adapter, you know, your cigarette-style lighter. There's, there's no, no way to do that. So that is a, is a big negative for me because it would be nice if you're on a trip and you're going to be driving for six hours, you, you could plug it into the, the 12 volt. I guess you could use an inverter or something like that, but it sure would be nice to have a, a 12 volt charging. Also, next dislike, I the display wasn't entirely accurate there. Um, a lot of times it seemed to drop really fast, and other times dropped really slow, so I didn't find it hugely accurate. Um, one other dislike was these jumper cables. They're okay, but they're kind of flimsy. Not really that robust, plasticky. Um, and the final dislike I had on it was the cooling fans. I found when it charged um, on the AC power, when it was charging, it made kind of a low hum as some fan was going on in there. And it, it kind of got annoying after a while listening to it. And when I was powering the the inverter, you know, I was using the heater as a test there. Those fans got really loud. So I find the, the fans a little annoying. Also, I don't know, you know, they're going to need to be cleaned inside there. So that's going to kind of be a headache. It's going to, it draws air through it. So in a dusty environment, it could get kind of gummed up inside. Almost forgot. One other dislike was with the 12 volt uh, power plugs here, the output plugs, it would have been nice if they would have provided and uh, maybe some accessory cables. You kind of have to fashion your own or know the polarity. So on these, sometimes the positive is the, the center, but sometimes I've seen positive be the outside. So you'd have to be pretty careful plugging stuff in. Um, they could have would have been nice if they had included a cable with a with a power adapter, 12 volt power adapter socket like this, a cigarette lighter type socket. I had to fashion my own to do some tests there. So. That's one one uh, thing I'd like to see them maybe provide some some more uh, accessory cables or at least have them available. Looking on their website, it doesn't look like like there's any that can be even purchased. So, in to conclusion, to summarize everything, I found the Lensun 510G solar generator to be an attractive package with good power output and battery capacity, but there were a couple significant flaws. As with many of these solar generators, the recharge time is excessive at 8 to 10 hours. The product would be much more useful with a recharge time 2 to 3 times shorter. A big feature missing is the lack of the 12 volt charging port. I would have expected to see a plug for charging from a vehicle cigarette lighter socket. On long travel days this would have been useful. Also a lighter socket style 12 volt output cable would have been nice. Because of these two drawbacks, I have a hard time recommending the, the Lensun 510 for most RVers. People with smaller rigs, day trippers, picnickers, tenters with low power needs may get some benefit as it does, a decent, it does have a decent amount of capacity in a lightweight package. It, it also may be useful for home backup power. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. Till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Cheers, everyone.